Today is October the 13th. What do we do if people won't listen to us? Let's find out together as we study Hosea 9. As we get ready to study Hosea 9, there could be a great advantage if you just pause this devotional right now and read Hosea 9. Now, if you've just had the opportunity to read Hosea 9, you see that the entire chapter is dedicated to more sins, some concrete, some just references to the wickedness and the evil that's there. But what caught my attention was verses 7 and 8. The second half of verse 7 says, Because of your great sin and hostility, you say, The prophets are crazy. The inspired men are fools. But Hosea says, The prophet is a watchman over Israel for my God. But traps are laid for him wherever he goes. He faces hostility even in the house of God. Now, as you read through the chapter, you may have seen some references that confused you. In verse 9, the things that my people do are as depraved as what they did in Gibeah long ago. What's Gibeah and what did the people do there? Well, Gibeah is the city mentioned in the territory of Benjamin in Judges chapters 19 to 21. There was a Levite looking for a concubine. He went to the country of Ephraim, or the region of Ephraim, found his concubine. He was taking her home. Late at night, he stopped in the village of Gibeah, which was in the territory of Benjamin. When he arrived there, a man who was also from Ephraim invited him into his own home. The men of the town of Gibeah began pounding on the man's door. Give us the man who's come to visit. We want to have sex with him. We want to abuse him. The next thing that happens is absolutely horrible by any uh, stretch of the imagination. It is not stated in Judges as a way to deal with issues like this. It's stated so we'll understand the depravity, not only of the men of Gibeah, but also of the Levite and even of the men from Ephraim. They took his concubine and threw her out the door. All night long, she was abused. She was literally raped to death. In the morning when the Levite came out of the house, he found his concubine on the porch, dead. He cut her into 12 pieces, sent those 12 pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel and said, come with me to Gibeah to destroy the city. The tribe of Benjamin tried to defend the town of Gibeah and so there was a civil war. 11 tribes against the one tribe of Benjamin, and Benjamin was almost destroyed. The things my people do are as depraved as what they did in Gibeah long ago. Hosea brings that to mind. In the next verse, he says, The Lord says, O Israel, when I first found you, it was like finding fresh grapes in the desert. What a joy! When I saw your ancestors, it was like seeing the first ripe figs of the season. How delicious! But then they deserted me for Baal Peor, giving themselves to that shameful idol. Soon they became vile, as vile as the God they worshipped. Baal Peor, what is that? Where is that? Or who is that? It is actually 
a who. Baal Peor is the Baal worshipped in the village of Peor. In the book of Numbers, chapter 25, the chapter starts like this. When the Israelites were camped at Acacia Grove, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with the local Moabite women. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. So the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal Peor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. The Israelites early on, Hosea refers to the ancestors, the book of Numbers, early on, fresh out of Egypt, they struggled in worshiping other gods. They deserted me for Baal Peor, giving themselves to that shameful idol. Then once more in verse 15, the Lord says all their wickedness began at Gilgal. So where was Gilgal and what wickedness began there? That's the interesting thing. Gilgal is the first city that Israel founded in the Promised Land. They crossed over the River Jordan just like they crossed over the Red Sea. The Lord held the water back. Even though they could have forded the river, crossed over in shallows, the Lord chose to allow them to cross over on dry ground. It's amazing. Um, in Joshua chapter 4, 19 and 20, they found the city of Gilgal and frequently during Joshua's lifetime, they returned to Gilgal as a place from which to attack the enemy, as a place to come back to worship the Lord. Gilgal is not the seat of wickedness. So what does the Lord mean when he says all their wickedness began at Gilgal? What he's saying is from the very start, they had it wrong. Even when there's no wickedness, that we can point to at Gilgal. Hosea says from the very start, they got it wrong. The punishment that Israel will receive in chapter 9 relates to the sin that they currently commit. If you look at chapter 10, how prosperous Israel is. Hosea is preaching to a nation that is prosperous. Jeroboam reigned for 41 years and he led Israel well. It was a time of prosperity. How prosperous Israel is. A luxuriant vine loaded with fruit. But the richer the people get, the more pagan altars they build. The more bountiful their harvests, the more beautiful their sacred pillars to other gods. You see what Hosea is saying is there is prosperity, but the prosperity is shown in idolatry. The punishments that's coming, chapter 9, verse 2, now your harvests will be too small to feed you. There will be no grapes for making new wine. Chapter 10 again, the second part of the second verse. The Lord will break down their altars, smash their sacred pillars. There's prosperity, but prosperity is short-lived. Second part of the punishment, 
there will be an exile. If you look at verse 3, you may no longer stay here in the Lord's land. Instead, you will return to Egypt. And in Assyria, you will eat food that is ceremonially unclean. The punishment fits the sin. They're content in Israel. Israel has grown. It's prosperous. The punishment, the prosperity will come to an end. Israel will shrink. You will be exiled. It all starts with their attitude to the prophets. The prophets are rejected. They say the prophets are crazy. They say the inspired man is a fool. So what do we do when people don't listen to us? We're faithful. We keep speaking. We keep talking, sharing. We allow God to continue to be God. What about you? When the going gets tough, when people reject you, when people look at you and say, you're crazy. <laughs> Do you keep at it? I want to encourage you. Scripture tells us to expect rejection. Not everybody wants to hear the words that we might say. Keep saying them. Like, follow, subscribe, and share this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Tomorrow, we'll ask the question, what do we do when evil surrounds us?